we get started, we need to make sure we have the right tools. One tool we'll need is Node.js. To see if you have Node.js, you can just type in node-v. We have version 16, but anything over version 12 will work. We're also going to use a tool called npm. This is the Node Package Manager. If for some reason you do not have these tools, there's a link down in the description to install them. Now to start our application, we're going to create a new folder. So I'm going to call it TypeScript Hello World, and I'm going to change directories or go into it. From here, I'm going to initialize our application with npm init. This will automate some of the creation work, including the package.json file. We'll keep most of these defaults the same. The entry point for our application will be the index.js, so all of this is good. We won't have a Git repository. We'll say yes, this all looks great, and then we'll clear this up. Now there are a few tools we're going to need besides Node in order to run and develop this application. One of them is TypeScript. So we'll npm install TypeScript, and this will add it as a dependency to our application. We're also going to install serverless. This is a technology that will allow us to deploy fairly easily. It automates a lot of the infrastructure creation and maintenance work. We'll talk a little bit about what it's abstracting later on. Now we're going to set up our TypeScript application. We'll do this with tisk dash dash init. This creates the tsconfig JSON file. If you're on a Mac, you can go open dot, and this will open the folder that we're in using the terminal. I happen to create this on my desktop, but you can create this anywhere you'd like on your computer. We have these node modules. These are our dependencies. This is the package.json that we created. I'm going to use Sublime Text. This is a text editor that will allow us to see what's in that file that we automated the creation of. And so that name, that version, all those things we said yes to, they're all in there. And then the two dependencies, which were the npm installs for serverless and TypeScript, those were added to this file as well as dependencies. And now we can write our TypeScript code. I'm going to open up another page in Sublime, and I'm going to save this as an index.ts file. .ts means it's a TypeScript file. Inside of here, we're going to write the code that will be run when our Lambda function is executed. Before we get started, we're going to install the TypeScript package so we can use it with Sublime. It'll give us that nice text highlighting. So I just did Command Shift P. We're going to install a package, and we want the TypeScript syntax. And there it is. We'll access TypeScript and we're ready to go. Now, since this will be hosted using AWS Lambda, the pattern that it follows in finding the code to execute is something like this. Export const handler equals async. We'll pass in an event, which will be of type any to start. We also use the arrow notation here to say, this is the block of code we want to run. To start off, we'll just print out the event. When we configure Lambda, we're going to set it to point to the index file at the handler function. And whenever a request comes in, this function will be called. For the implementation, we're just printing an event. But let's make this a little more complicated. We are going to return a JSON object. It'll be a hard-coded JSON object, but we can always change that later to make it more dynamic. In this case, we're always going to return a 200. And for the body, we're just going to stringify a message. So we're going to have a message, and its value will be my favorite TypeScript, hello world. And that's it. That's all the thing we'll return. Eventually, we could build this out so it does all of these different complicated things. But right now, this is pretty good. We'll return a JSON object from someone triggering our code or triggering an event to hit our code. So this is the TypeScript. 
Now we just need to host it on AWS Lambda so we can actually use this thing no matter where we're located. Another tool we downloaded was the serverless package. This is something that's gonna automate our infrastructure and build it for us. All we have to do is create a configuration file. Now the serverless helper package can't just deploy things to AWS without any access. We have to give it the appropriate credentials so it does have that access. So let's log into AWS. In order to give the serverless helper package access, we'll need to use the IAM Identity Access Management service. We'll be creating a new user and the helper package will use these credentials in order to deploy stuff on AWS for us. We're gonna call it serverless helper and we're gonna give it programmatic access. This will provide us with an access key ID and a secret access key. Now we could be really specific about what permissions we give this user and we're gonna just give it admin access. There are ways around this and through other configurations, you can be really specific on what you're giving that serverless helper function access to, but right now we just want it to work. We wanna give it access to deploy stuff and so that's why we're giving it admin access. And we have the keys. And so we have the access key ID and the secret access key. Copy these, we're gonna use them in a second. When you leave this page, the secret access key goes away. You'll never see it again. You'll have to rotate the credentials in order to get a new one. So you don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure you remember it and you store it in a safe place. But now we have the credentials and we can configure our helper tool, the thing that's gonna build our infrastructure. So we'll go serverless config credentials. The provider or the cloud provider is AWS. And then the key will be our access key. It's a little blurred out or blocked out here, uh, but you have your own version, right? So you wanna deploy it on your environment and not my environment. And I'm using this with a new AWS account and so it's kind of freaking out and we need to overwrite it. So we'll go dash O, we'll provide that new option and it works. We overwrote the old credentials that were there. Now we need to define what infrastructure we want to build and how we want our TypeScript application to live on that infrastructure. So we are going to create a serverless.yaml file. This will define all the different resources we want to create in AWS. I'm just gonna open this folder. We have the same things as before in addition to this index.ts file that contains our application. I'm gonna use Sublime again. We'll create a new file. This one will be serverless.yaml. And we're gonna put our configurations for the infrastructure we want to build in this. The service we're going to create is going to be called Hello World TypeScript. We're hosting this TypeScript application on the internet and we're gonna put it in the AWS cloud. And so that's the name of our provider. For runtime, this is something that's used by Lambda. This is the Lambda environment or runtime environment we want to use to run our code. Node.js will work just fine. Then we'll define the configurations for the actual Lambda function. We'll call ours hello world function. And this is just a variable name. It's something that's used by serverless in order to refer to it. So when we run a command to deploy this function or to trigger it, we will use this variable name in order to reference it, to reference this set of resources in the cloud. In this case, the resource is a Lambda function, but it could be a group of a bunch of different things. We're also going to define the handler. So this is the entry point for where we want Lambda to look in order to run the application. We could change the file name or the function name, as long as it's associated with what we have in our TypeScript. So the fact that we're in the index.ts file and we're calling the handler function, we could create a different configuration, but as long as those match up, we're good. Typically index.handler and having that index file with the handler function, 
That's typically the convention, but again, as long as they match up, you should be fine. This is very similar to the main method in Java. Here, we just have to configure it. Now, for name, this is what we're going to call the Lambda function in AWS. And so when we look at our AWS console or that window with all of the AWS configurations, that website, what name do we want to be displayed? And we'll just call it Hello World TypeScript. Hey there, thanks for watching this tutorial. If you've already learned something new, why not subscribe? Thanks. Now there are two more things we need to do in order to deploy our code to AWS. First, we need to compile our TypeScript code into JavaScript. So we'll do TSC, and this will create the JavaScript file that will be the entry point with that serverless YAML. So it'll look in the index.js file, lots of different code here, but it will look for that handler function. Another thing we need to do is test our function locally. We can do this using a special serverless function. This won't deploy our code, but it'll run it locally as if it were a Lambda function. We'll type in serverless invoke local dash dash function, and then the name of the Lambda resource. And so if we go back, so if we go back and check it, it was hello world function. We'll copy that. We'll paste it in our command, hit enter, and this is the output of our function. And so this is what we were expecting it to return, this JSON with a status code, a body with that message, my favorite TypeScript, hello world. Now to deploy it, we'll just run serverless deploy. One command to run it in AWS. Now this may take a minute because there are a couple different resources it's deploying. We see this create stack because it's creating a cloud formation stack. CloudFormation is a special tool Amazon's created, another Amazon Web Service, and it actually automates the creation of infrastructure. And so that's what this tool is using. It's using another automation tool to actually build the AWS resources. One of those resources is an S3 bucket or an S3 artifact. It's uploading our code as an S3 artifact, S3 simple storage service, another Amazon service. And we see this here, it's uploading it with that service. And we can see this actually happening in AWS. And so if we go to cloud formation, we have this stack, this hello world TypeScript dev. This was created by the serverless helper and we can see the different resources it's created. And so it's creating a bucket policy as well as a deployment bucket. So it's using one stack and slowly updating it to build up all of our resources. And we can watch it be created here. Another option is to just watch it in the terminal as everything is being added to our infrastructure. This is a lot of what is abstracted to you with the serverless helper tool. You just configure what you want and it does this all for you. But it's kind of important to know what resources you're using so you understand the cost impacts of that, but it is nice to just get something up and running. Let's go check out our Lambda function. Here we have this hello world TypeScript function. This is what our serverless helper created. Inside of here, we can see a ton of details about the Lambda function. If we go back to our terminal, we'll see that the stack update finished and we get a bunch of information about the function that was deployed. And so they deployed it in US East 1. We didn't specify a region, so that's where they chose to deploy it. We have the number of resources used. We have the function itself that was created, a little bit of a summary of what we deployed to AWS. Now, let's clear this up and call our Lambda. We'll go serverless invoke dash dash function and hello world function is the variable name we gave it in our YAML. Now, we didn't add the local option, so this is actually hitting our resources in AWS and we get that response code that we were expecting. We get that response we were expecting. Now, it would be nice if we could invoke our function using a URL. And it's not that hard to do that. All we have to do is add more configurations to our serverless.yaml. We're just gonna add events-http get hello. So when we hit a hello endpoint, we'll be able to get that same response. 
So let's save this and redeploy. Here it's redeploying. Another thing that would be nice about this is if it didn't redeploy, if you could check like, were there any changes to my TypeScript code? If not, then let's not redeploy the code to S3 and let's not do all these other things. Let's just make the updates that were seen. So that's something that would be nice if it did that versus going through every single deployment process again. Another thing you could do to improve this is if we go to the docs, we can see all the different configurations that we can set for our infrastructure using the serverless framework. We can go to AWS. These are other supported platforms. All right, here's our Git endpoint. And so this is what we can use to access our API. There it is. There's our code. Message my favorite TypeScript hello world. We're accessing an endpoint and we could use this anywhere. So if I had a front end app and I wanted to hook it to a back end service, I would just need to make a get call to this API. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, subscribe. Happy coding.